Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy. Welcome to part 10 of my Alchemy tutorial series in Logic Pro 10. In this video, I'm going to show you guys two very specific uh, sampling functions. I'm going to show you guys how to use velocity layers as well as round robin in Alchemy. Uh, if you've already watched my or you followed my EXS24 um, uh, series of tutorials, you're probably already familiar with what uh, velocity layering and um, round robin is, but I'll just in brief explain what it is first. Uh, velocity layers allow you to put two or more samples on a key and then switch between those two samples depending on how hard you, how hard or how fast you hit the key in your keyboard. So the, the velocity of a note um, will determine which sample is selected and played back. So you can get a more dynamic instrument where if you play harder or faster on the keys, you will get a um, a dip one sound and then if you play softer on the keys you'll get another sound so it gives uh, the instrument uh, more dynamics and that can be broken up into multiple layers not just a loud and soft range but that's the way we're going to do it today just because it's simple uh, round robin is uh, a sampling technique that allows samples to be alternated uh, al to alternate in a list so if you don't want the same sample to play back twice you can alternate uh, between the samples to give it some variation so let's start with velocity layering. Um, let's go ahead and clear our instrument. We're going to create a new instrument right here. We're going to import audio on source A. Um, I have an instrument that I made in my sample library. And it is called Crystalline Pad. And there are 13 samples ranging from C1 up to C3. Um, that sound like this. So let's import those in. Sampler mode. Mapping is going to be pitch. And like I said in the last video, uh, Alchemy has the, the ability to sense the pitch of a note. Um, or if you label it properly, I believe it can also um, map it that way. So let's go to our edit window now. And sure enough, yep, everything's mapped properly. Now, just to make this sound more like a pad to me, uh, I'm going to go back to uh, the source window here. Actually, let's go to globals. And uh, we're going to pull the release time out quite a bit. And pull the attack time up a bit. This is just on the master envelope that's paired to, to master volume. There we go. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down the velocity sensitivity because we want velocity more or less to switch between two different samples, not actually to affect volume um, in this instrument. All right, so let's uh, go back to our edit window. All right, so this is uh, this is just an instrument with one dynamic. It's got the sort of crystalline sound with a pad on it. Um, I have another set of 13 samples. That's a it's a very similar um, sound to all of these, except the crystalline sound isn't quite as prominent. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to select all of these samples by holding Shift and clicking on each one of them. Um, I wish there was a way to select all, but there no, there isn't um, that I know of. There, I wish you could just drag over them, but I guess you can't. Um, these, since they're a little brighter sounding than the other samples, are going to be our upper velocity range. So if you hover over the bottom of this, you can pull up, and this determines your velocity range. So the very bottom would be zero, the very top would be 127. And one thing you'll notice is as you move these around, you'll see this down here, the low velocity and high velocity change. So if you change the high velocity, you'll see this move from 127. So we want that to be max at 127, and we want the uh, bottom range to be, let's say, 80. So the next set of samples that we bring in are going to need to be 0 to 79 to fill this range. Because right now, if I play the key softly, we're not going to get anything. I have to hit the keys hard in order to get a sound. So let's go ahead and import um, the other 13 samples. 
Now we can't go from here and import audio again because it'll actually replace what we have. Um, by default, when you import a group of samples, uh, it actually imports them as a group. So I'm going to double click on this group and I'm going to call this high group. We're going to create another group and we're going to import samples to that new group. And these are under the low velocity folder and I'll, I'll, I'll play a couple of them. So you can see that they're they're a little bit softer in the high range. There isn't as much of the crystalline sound, but the pad sound is still there. Um, so that's what we're going to do with the dynamic of this of this instrument is the, the harder you hit the key, the more you're going to hear uh, more of that crystalline sound. And let's pull the velocity range down now to 79. So we have 0 to 79, and in the high group we have 80 to 127. Now, we could just um, leave this as is, um, but we don't actually have to separate this into two groups. I just wanted to sort of demonstrate groups. Essentially, groups and samplers are a lot like folders. Um, it's just a way to organize samples, but there are some other um, so there are some other cool options like uh, you know creating round robin that you can do with groups. It's not necessary here. Um, so what I'm actually going to do, um, just so I can see all the samples on one view, is I'm going to select all of these. And you can actually move samples individually or as a group like this to another group just by right clicking on them and saying assign to existing group. So I'm going to assign this to the high group with the other ones. So now there's nothing in the low group. We can right click and delete it. But in the high group, all of our samples are in there. And I'm just going to rename this uh, group. So now, if we play softly, we get this sound. If we play, play more loud, So it gives our instrument a little bit more uh, dynamic. We have these two different sounds on each key rather than just one sound. Even albeit they are kind of similar, um, it does give the instrument a little bit more uh, more dynamics. Now, if I really wanted to, I could continue on and, and set loop ranges for every single sample, but we did that in the last video, so I'm not gonna show that again. So that's just uh, the basics of using velocity layers. Let's build another instrument, but this time we're going to use the round robin technique. Um, what I did in advance, off uh, uh, before I made the video, make uh, started making this video, was I layered up a bunch of drum samples together. Um, I kind of wanted to create these sort of war drums, um, and it's basically just a kick drum, a loud snare, some soft snares panned left and right, and some uh, toms panned left and right, and in uh, each one. The sample is different. Like this is a different sample than this. This is a different sample than this, and so forth. Um, you know, across the timeline here. The other thing I did for each one of these sets of drums is I nudged certain drums to the right to be sort of off time, just at random. It's not. It's never the same. And then in certain uh, spots, let me hit A here. I pulled the volume up or down on certain drums. So this is all just to create variation between these four uh, drum hits. So let me play you what these, what these sound like. So very similar, but they do have some um, some mild differences based on where I nudged things, and um, you know, in the ones where the low tom was brought up, it sounds a little more bassy sounding. Um, so that's what we're going for here: is we want to um, create an instrument that has a little bit of uh, variance to it, has a little variety to it. Um, so let's go into Alchemy again, uh, a new instance of Alchemy. I'm going to call this war drums because that's what I called the samples. Um, let's clear our setting here. Import audio on our source. Uh, these samples I put in my sample library under drums and they are called war drums. So there's four of them. Again, back to back. 
one more time. You can hear there's a little bit of variety in them. Uh, I'm going to change the mode to sampler and this time I'm going to put it on drum mapping. Import these. When you use the drum mapping mode, it just sort of um, puts them sequentially. Uh, one thing I definitely want to do is, because these are drums, I don't want them to be gated like that when I let go of the key. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my global settings. I'm going to turn off the um, and the main envelope controlling uh, volume. I'm actually going to pull down the velocity sensitivity as well. Let's go back in here now. And let's see. There you go. I guess when you're in the um, when you're in the actual editor and you hit the key, the envelope still um, takes takes hold. But when I press my keyboard, the um, the envelope's no longer uh, stopping the um, um, that reverb tail. So here's what we're gonna do. We in order to create a round robin group, we actually have to put all four of these samples in four different groups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the second one and I'm going to say assign to new group. So it assigned it to this group. So group one, group two. Um, this one's going to go to its own group. And this one's going to go to its own group. So now we have group one, two, and three. Let me just name these. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. There we go. Accidentally pulled up a, a screen set there. Um, so this is going to be called group one, group two, group three. Group form, just double clicking and renaming. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I move all these onto the same note. I want them to be on C1. The problem with this now is that um, some of them are going to be detuned. Um, We'll fix that in a moment, but let's let's first set up our round robin group. Round robins in um, Alchemy are really, really easy. All you do is you select a group, and you go to starts. Instead of starting always, you change this to a round robin. So this is creating a round robin, and this is voice number one of the round robin group. Then you click on group two, select round robin. This is voice two. Number three, select round robin. Voice three, it does this automatically. Four, round robin, voice four. So now when I play C1, we hear our four different um, samples, one after the other. Now they sound a little um, weird and out of tune, some of them do, because when I moved some of these samples down to C1, it actually changed their uh, their pitch because I moved them off of their root key, which is shown right here. Um, so this one's on C1, and its root key is C1, so it's good. This one is on C1, but its root key is D flat 1. So what you do is you click on the sample, hit learn, and then just press the root key that you want it to go to, C1, on your, on your keyboard. So same thing, we'll click on this one, learn, hit C1, click on this one, learn, C1. So now they should all be back to their original pitch again. So I got my four different samples alternating. Now, in the next video, I'll do a more complex example with uh, with round robin and some other uh, uh, grouping techniques. But this is just the, the basics of it. Um, if you were building, say, like an acoustic drum kit, you might have like six different snare drums layered up and you may have them alternating just to give like a, a really natural sound, um, especially if they're going to be played in uh, rapid succession, you're going to want more um, round robin groups so that it sounds more natural. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.